It is overtime here again at Old Favorite Friday, we are, where we are doing what we always do, and that is giving praise and love to classic, incredible breweries and classic, incredible beers. And you don't get much more incredible or classic than Sierra Nevada. Uh, Sierra Nevada, this is the seventh beer we've done on Old Favorite Friday. It's almost three years old. Uh, one of our favorite breweries here at Barrel Le Mans, one of my personal favorite breweries. And they do so many great beers, it's kind of hard. I mean, pretty much every beer they do, unless it's two years old, deserves to be part of Old Favorite Friday. But what I have here is Hop the Mump. Optimum is a triple IPA. It's 11% alcohol. And this is a beer that I adore because it is such a throwback to what I think IPAs, big IPAs, double IPAs, triple IPAs are kind of I mean, not supposed to be. That's not fair because you can kind of do what you want with IPAs. It's a great thing about the beer business. But I love the maltiness of this beer. I love the old school hop profile with some, you know, some new, some modern hops, some old hops in there together. But getting that citrus, the dank, earthiness that comes out of this beer and what to go along with that great malt uh, flavor i think the malt uh, balance is kind of lacking in today's ipas i don't see as much much malt forward beers and i know a lot of people are really opposed to that they don't like to have uh, caramel flavors in their ipa i'm someone that still adores those beers like maharaja uh, from back in the day uh, maximus from lagunitas a beer that we featured on all favor friday before uh, and hoptimum is is it's up there. It's one of the best, uh, in my opinion. Like I said, 11% ABV. It's got this gorgeous orange hue, um, amber orange hue to it. Uh, I mean, I'm getting honey. I'm getting caramel. This is such a complex, interesting malt bill with tons of different flavors coming out of it. Uh, and then you have you throw in the hops. You have citrus. I have like an orange marmalade kind of flavor here. Resinous pine just once again, it just ticks all the boxes when you're able to to drink a beer like this and get the the amount of malt complexity and the amount of hop complexity where kind of every time you go back for another sip you're tasting something different i mean that's just masterful artful brewing and they obviously they hit that the, hit that out of the park on so many of their beers but this really really features that uh by having a beer this big i mean 11 percent. it's not boozy i mean we we just produced a triple IPA in a kind of a West Coast style uh, that I, I really like, I'm really proud of. And this is one of the templates of the kind of beer that we were looking to make. And I can say, you know, ours is a little more boozy. It, it definitely for the first time out, it's a good beer, but we did not, you know, hit it on all cylinders because, you know, we, your practice makes perfect, right? It'll be better the next time we do it. Uh, it doesn't quite hit these heights, but this just does everything so well. Uh, it doesn't miss a beat. Uh, this is a, uh, a once a year release for them, uh, only available for a couple months. So I was so happy. I, I missed it last year, or else I would have featured it last year for Old Favorite Friday. I can't believe this beer is almost 15 years old. It came out in 2010 for the first time. It was originally brewed as part of their beer camp. If you don't know much about that, you should go and look on that. It's a pretty cool project that they have or had. I'm actually not sure if they're still doing it, but uh, a, a cool project that they at least had in the past uh, where they bring in people from the industry and, and kind of teach them about beer. So this came from that idea and it ended up coming into their regular lineup and just kind of building off what they did with things like Torpedo and uh, they have the extra torpedo now right now uh which is also a beer that i absolutely love but i can't believe 2010 I, I still look at this as like a new beer on the block because i was in the beer industry at the time and fell in love with the beer the first time i had a chance to try it i just have to keep going back to it i love this beer so much so yeah if you, if you see this on your shelves you really have to do yourself a favor if you haven't picked it up in a while you know it, a lot of times in preparation for these videos i'll, I'll go online and I'll check on the reviews and things of that nature. I had a lot of people saying that this beer was too sweet. And I think you're kind of missing the point of what a double, triple IPA is supposed to be if you're not expecting a little bit of sweetness to balance out the hop flavor. They're not wrong. There's, there are double IPAs and uh, that are out there that are, or big IPAs, I should say, that are out there that have less malt sweetness to it. But I just think this is, is this is just such so much more of a pleasant drinking uh, opportunity when you're when you have that malt balance to go with the hops. Uh, but I was also shocked at some of the scores in this beer, which I thought should be much much higher when you compare it to some of the other IPAs that are out there in the market. And it's just it's a shame for me when I have this beer. And listen, it has plenty of praise. If you go online, you see reviews. People are praising this beer. People that know a lot about beer are going back to this uh, for the first time in a while and just being blown away. Like wow, I forgot how good this beer 
was because I've been just, you know, focusing on harder to find beers and, and rarer beers from smaller breweries. And then this beer comes out, it's on the store shelf, it's at a grocery store. And you're like, ah, I don't need to, I don't need to hop them on this year. I know what that tastes like. And then you pick it up for the first time in a while and you're like, wow, they do everything right. So <laughs> I highly recommend it once again. Uh, food pairings for something like this. I, I love uh, the malt sweetness, again, I've mentioned it many times, but I think this would go really well with like a Memphis-style barbecue, uh, dry rub uh, barbecue, because you're adding some sweetness uh, to that to go along with the spiciness and the richness of the meat, which automatically barbecue goes really well with IPAs. But I think that this malt sweetness here adds some complexity to that and really uh, pairs with that well. We all know that there's, you know, there's sweet barbecue sauces, things of that nature, but you don't need that when you've got something like this. Um, I also think that we can go with something like, I mean, the classic would be like a buffalo chicken sandwich or buffalo chicken in general, wings, things of that nature that are really, really rich, really salty. Once again, we're adding some sweetness to that. We're adding some other complexity with those like dank and resinous compounds and flavors, adding some citrus to there, a little bit of a kind of perception of acidity. So all those things I think go really well with either one of those two dishes. I would love to have those together. And maybe I'll try some with this, uh, uh, try one of those two items with uh, with what's remaining in this six pack after this video is done. Uh, but guys, thank you for joining us for Old Favorite Friday. Pick up some Hoptimum this weekend. Pick up some Sierra Nevada if you can't get your hands on that. Let us know what you think. If, if you think we got this one right, we, 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 if you love this beer as much as we do, if you're as impressed as we are, and also keep telling us what we, we should be drinking uh, for the next Old Favorite Friday, please like, subscribe, hit the notification so you continue to get videos just like this one in your inbox. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.